Today is Monday, November 1st. We'll tell you about two major events bringing the world's leaders together. And as part of that, we'll explain some key things to know about the so-called COP26. Also, Alec Baldwin breaks his silence for the first time since the movie set shooting. Plus, Philadelphia is said to become the first major U.S. city to have this new law. Why tens of thousands of travelers were stranded over the weekend. And what brought a bunch of legends together in one place. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Thousands of the world's leaders and activists are gathered in Glasgow, Scotland, for a major climate change conference. It's called the COP26 conference, and it'll last for the next 12 days. COP stands for Conference of the Parties, and the United Nations put it together to deal with the climate crisis. The hope is world leaders will agree on concrete plans to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So that means the amount of greenhouse gases put into the atmosphere should equal those taken out. But this is something the UN has tried before, 25 times over the last few decades. Most of those conferences have not led to huge real-life changes. The biggest breakthrough happened at COP21 in 2015 in Paris, France. That's when the so-called Paris Agreement was adopted. 191 countries plus the European Union signed on. But as of this year, not one major economy is on track to honor those commitments. So the top goal this year is to get the world back on track. Starting today, about 200 world leaders will lay out their country's efforts to curb emissions from burning coal, gas, and oil. And they'll talk about how to deal with the damage already done. A lot of world leaders, including President Biden, are coming to COP26 right from the latest G20 summit in Rome. The G20 countries represent the world's 20 largest economies, and they produce more than 75 percent of the world's climate damaging emissions. During the summit over the last couple of days, they acknowledged the goals from the Paris Agreement are still important, but they were pretty vague on exactly how they plan to reach those goals. One thing the G20 leaders did agree on was to stop paying for new coal-fired power plants overseas. But they did not address how they were using coal in their own countries. Coal is still the single largest source of electricity around the world, and it's the largest source of carbon dioxide emissions. Anyway, all attention is now turning toward Scotland. The UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson says COP26 is the, quote, world's moment of truth to be continued. The cinematographer shot and killed on the Rust movie set was finally laid to rest. The family and friends of Helena Hutchins held a private funeral for her last night, and that came soon after the world heard from the actor who pulled the trigger. For the first time since the shooting, movie star Alec Baldwin spoke to the paparazzi. He said he's not allowed to talk about the details of the shooting since there's an ongoing investigation, but he had some things to say about the woman who died. He called Hutchins his friend and said he's in constant contact with her husband and son. Baldwin says they're overwhelmed with grief. Remember, law enforcement officials say they think a real bullet was loaded into an antique revolver Baldwin was practicing with, even though an assistant director told him it was safe to use. But lawyers for the movie's armorer, who was in charge of guns on the set, now says she did not know where the live rounds came from. They say she was hired for two positions on the movie, which made it tough for her to focus on her job as armorer, and that she fought for training and safety meetings that never happened. As of this morning, the production company has not responded to that statement. So far, no one is facing criminal charges, but authorities say that's not out of the question. The most restrictive abortion law in the country is going back before the Supreme Court today. We're talking about the Texas law that bans abortions as soon as doctors can detect a heartbeat, so usually about six weeks into a pregnancy. But abortion rights themselves are not actually up for debate today. Instead, the high court is going to consider how the Texas law is written, and specifically who is allowed to sue or be sued over it. Texas lawmakers say they wrote the law in a very unique way, specifically to make it hard to challenge in federal court. In the past, the Supreme Court has said states cannot ban abortions before a fetus can survive outside the womb. So usually that's around 24 weeks. But in the Texas law, the state is not actually enforcing the law. Instead, it's up to private citizens to sue abortion providers or anyone else who helps someone get an abortion. So now the Supreme Court needs to decide whether other cases can continue in lower courts. So don't expect this to be the end of this battle. It seems the U.S. has finally passed the peak of the latest wave of COVID-19. New cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are all going down on a national level. Right now, the U.S. is recording about 72,000 new COVID-19 cases a day on average. That's pretty much the same as this time last year. But the trajectory is different. Last November, case numbers were going up. 
Now they've been going down since the middle of September. And deaths have gone down from 2,000 a day a couple of months ago to about 1,400 a day now. So public health experts are calling this a turning point. They credit the new vaccines as well as the return to mask wearing and growing immunity in previously hard hit states. Still, many doctors are urging people not to let their guards down, especially as we get into the winter months. More news coming up, but first a quick break to thank our sponsor. You all know I love to cite research, and Ritual offers plenty of it. The company says more than 97% of women 19 to 50 years old are not getting enough vitamin D in their diet, and 95% are not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega-3s. So Ritual invested in research for their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin, specifically designed to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of women ages 18 and up. The results? In a study published in the scientific journal Frontiers in Nutrition, Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in 12 weeks. It's part of the reason I feel so great about taking my Ritual vitamins as part of my everyday. I'm currently taking the postnatal vitamin, and I love knowing I'm not only getting those extra nutrients, but also the ingredients are non-GMO, traceable, and vegan-friendly, so there's no shady stuff in there. And right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash newsworthy and turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com slash newsworthy. Philadelphia is set to be the first major American city to ban police from pulling over drivers for minor violations. Think a broken taillight. Though police can still pull people over for things like speeding or running a stop sign. The city council passed what's called the Driving Equality Bill. Studies show police are more likely to pull over black drivers than white drivers for those minor violations. So this bill is meant to address that issue and to ease tension between police and community members. Supporters also say that most traffic stops do not lead to police finding something more, like a weapon or drugs. Still, some critics worry it may impact driver safety, for example, if someone has a harder time seeing you because of that broken taillight. Or, as one city councilman said, it might be illegal since it goes against state law. But most of the council, and even police, are on board. In fact, Philadelphia's police commissioner helped craft the bill, and the police department called it a, quote, fair and balanced approach to addressing racial disparity without compromising public safety. Philadelphia's mayor is expected to sign the bill into law this week, and then it'll take effect about four months later. Double check your flight status if you're heading to the airport today. There could be some changes after a slew of flights were canceled over the weekend. Tens of thousands of travelers found themselves stranded or at least scrambling to get to their destination. American Airlines canceled close to 2,000 flights between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The AP reports the cancellations yesterday alone impacted one-third of the flights scheduled for the day. The main reason for this? Staffing shortages. Wind gusts had impacted American Airlines' busiest hub in DFW late last week, so that made it tough to get crews in position, and then staffing problems snowballed from there. It's the third incident of its kind in just the last three months. Both Spirit and Southwest have also had similar issues recently. And really, the Wall Street Journal says this is an ongoing problem because of the pandemic. Airlines cut back, urging thousands of workers to retire early or take leaves of absence. So now they're trying to reboot operations, but it's been more challenging than expected. A massive outage of an online gaming platform left millions of young players unable to access their games over the weekend. Roblox is very popular, especially with preteens. More than 40 million people play on the platform every day, and more than half of players are reportedly younger than 13. Young users and parents alike took to Twitter to complain about the outage since the platform was down for about three days. The company says everything is back up and running now, though, and the CEO of Roblox put out a statement saying the outage was from several factors and that a core system became overwhelmed. He added that it was not from an outside attack and that no player data was compromised, as far as he knows. He also said the outage was also not from a promotion with Chipotle, as some people had guessed. But again, the online gaming platform should be working now as usual. Some music legends were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame over the weekend, and as Rolling Stone puts it, this was one of the most entertaining inductions in recent memory, probably because there were quite a few surprise appearances, from a former president to a Beatle to a championship athlete. Rapper Jay-Z was one of the new inductees who got a lot of fanfare. He was introduced by former President Barack Obama, NBA star LeBron James, late-night legend David Letterman, and comedian Dave Chappelle. Music icon Paul McCartney welcomed in another inductee, the band Foo Fighters. One of the night's biggest moments came when McCartney joined the band to perform the Beatles' hit, Get Back. 
Other inductees included Carol King, Tina Turner, The Go-Go's, and Todd Rundgren. The full ceremony will be shown on HBO later this month. Dia de los Muertos, also known as Day of the Dead, continues today. On the annual Mexican holiday, people honor their loved ones who have passed away. They sometimes create elaborate altars to commemorate them. They also gather to tell stories and eat and drink. The holiday is sometimes marked by parades where people paint beautiful skulls on their faces or on ceramics. One of the largest parades in the world happened yesterday in Mexico City. Thousands of people gathered to watch the marching skeletons, dancers, and floats. And that's it for your main news today, but now it's time for Money Monday when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, this episode is brought to you by Indeed. We've talked about it right here on The Newsworthy recently, that more people are quitting their jobs. Some have referred to it as the great resignation. But if you're hiring, you don't have to see this as a challenging environment. You could see it as a great opportunity with Indeed's help. Indeed is a hiring partner that gets you what you really want a short list of quality candidates as fast as possible. Because you can do it all, attract, interview, and hire all at Indeed. I know what a time-consuming process hiring usually is, and it's often when you're needing to fill the spot yesterday, right? That's why having everything in one place is so helpful. No wonder Indeed is the number one source of hires in the U.S. and delivers one and a half times more hires than even internal referrals, according to Talent Nest. So get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Offer valid through December 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Okay, now back to Money Monday. Home prices have been going up so much lately that now more people are being priced out of their own cities. A new study from the real estate technology firm Knock looked at household incomes in certain cities and compared them with mortgages on new home construction. By those calculations, the least affordable markets for new homes are in Sacramento, California and Miami, Florida. In both of those cities, 80% of households cannot afford new homes. The affordability study also says more than 60% of people in Las Vegas, Nevada, Phoenix, Arizona, Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, and more are also being priced out of new homes. Real estate analysts have said they expect the housing market to cool off a little bit in the next year, but there probably will not be a big crash like we saw in 2008. All right, thank you so much for listening today. We'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 